Hey, we're going to have some fun today. Um, Quibus was pulled away at the last moment, so you're here with Uncle Don. If you've been on Chad Smith's app and you've seen him refer to Uncle Don, I'll have to admit that is me. So I think we call this uh, 20 or 30 minutes with Uncle Don, and what I'm going to do is encourage and help and teach all of you who haven't played drums before how to get into it. And if you just started with us in the last couple of weeks, this is lesson three, we did a very basic rock beat in lesson one. In lesson two, we did one that was a little bit different, and I'll go through them with you in a minute. And then uh, today, we're going to do one that's even a little bit more complicated. It kind of generally would be called a surf beat. Back in my day, surf music was really popular, uh, going back into the 70s. And this was a, a beat that kind of typified that kind of music. Um, the other thing that is going to be really fun next week, uh, if you send in a video of yourself playing these basic beats and you don't need a drum set. The whole idea is to tap them out on your knees or get some pots and pans and some sticks and stuff and just tap around on and, and play a basic beat. Um, we're going to pick somebody who's going to actually win a drum set. Uh, and the drum set's a basic kit. We call it the main stage kit. It's a Pacific drum set. It comes complete with cymbals and everything. So you will be able to get yourself kicked out of the apartment building you live in. Your parents will tell you to play a little bit quieter, but your passion is going to be there and you're going to be a drummer. Uh, and there's a lot of ways you can make your drum set quiet when you practice on it too. So when you actually take lessons, uh, which we encourage you to do here on Drum Channel, there's no substitute for the experience of taking a lesson with a private instructor. What we're here to do is not only make that learning experience go faster, but also to give you access to the best drummers in the world, where when I was growing up and probably your age, I'd have to wait till they came to town, hope that I could hang out with them behind stage, ask them a few questions, or talk to some friends. Hey, do you know this guy? Do you know how he's doing that? Did he show you that? Now we have access to all the greatest drummers in the world. And through various different lessons we have on drumchannel.com, uh, you can get little short tips from them and the secrets of the pros. Or we have more master classes, which is a drummer telling you how he does a whole series of lessons. Uh, and then we have uh, the live lesson rebroadcast that we're doing here also. Terry Bozio, if you're looking to be a pro and you're really serious about it and you want to take your playing to the next level, uh, he has a series of lessons. It's the art of drumming. Gets very much into the melodic and the rhythmic aspect of playing. And Greg Bissonnette the Greg Bissonnette Lessons on Drum Channel. Uh, it's his idea of breaking down everything that you need to do in a practical application, adding to your drum vocabulary, which is a word that he likes to use uh, a whole lot. So there's lots of ways that you can learn. Basically, the first most fundamental thing is, you know, when you get a pair of sticks, how to hold them. This is lesson three. Whether you have sticks or not, I'm going to give you a little example of the best way that you could hold the sticks. At the end, too, I'm going to show you something a little more sophisticated for uh, guys who might be watching this getting ready for the next lesson, which uh, Adam Coons is going to give. It'll be an intermediate lesson. Um, what is he doing the lesson on? Uh, could he give you a tip for what that is? I forget what it's going to be. Um, and, and it's going to be a triplets? All right. Um, and if you have no idea what triplets is, don't worry about it. It's kind of fun to watch somebody do something, even if it's way over your head, because you'll see what you'll be able to do eventually. And it really only takes a few minutes a day in order to get into literally the rhythm and the rhythm that I want you to play in order to get this first rock beat down. And if you can practice a half hour a day or 45 minutes and you really get serious about getting your playing to the next level, you're going to progress. There's no quick way to do it. If somebody tells you you're going to be able to do it in 10 minutes, your singles are going to get faster in five minutes, it's not going to happen. Um, it's a matter of motor skills. You really are the instrument. Your body is what actually is making the motions that's allowing the stick, there's nothing too sophisticated going on here, to follow and motivate the bounce of the stick or the rebound of the stick. Um, a little earlier today, especially for the European audience, we had uh, a great lesson here by Rick Latham, uh, who's written one of the most uh, legendary books of all time, great teacher and great performer also. Uh, so check on our schedule. Every Tuesday we give you lessons, and there's enough to practice for the whole week. And during the week we're going to have some practice sessions with you too to help you with all the lessons that we do have on Jump Channel here. Let's go to our very first lesson. I'm not going to go through it in real detail because lesson one and lesson two are up on YouTube. They should be up on live lessons on the Drum Channel site in the next couple days. Um, all you need to do, sit there and think about tapping your foot on one, two, three, and four. And you're tapping it in an even pulse. Think of your heart rate and count one, two, three, four. This is lesson one. You're going to have two for your hand for every one for your foot. Together, right, together, right, together, right, together, right. 
I'm going way too fast for you probably. Let's slow it down. Together right, together right, together right, together right, together right. Just play that, get it going. In a couple of minutes I'll show you what that sounds like on the drum set, like we did last week. Then you're going to say together right, all together right. Say it, spit it out. Come on, Stephen. Together right, all together right, together right, all together right. Okay, I'm going to get the cameraman into this. He plays drums though. So it's together right, all together right, together right, all together right. This is kind of the cheating way to back into it, but once you get this down, you've got it. This is a basic rock beat. Together right, all together right, together. This is rock beat number one we did in the very first lesson. Together right, all together right. One and two and three and four and. Go into the kitchen quick, grab like a frying pan and a pot, and if you have some like wooden spoons, there you go. The frying pan is going to be a higher pitch, so that could be like your cymbal. Uh, the pot could be like your snare drum, and then just like tap your foot on the floor, and you're going to get kind of uh, sound like you'd be playing a drum set. One and two and three and four and, or together right, all together right, together right, all together right. All right. That's number one, and work on that because if you can send us a video of yourself doing it just like this, or with some pots and pans, or whatever you can hit around, the, don't get in trouble, don't get me in trouble, don't be breaking anything, whatever you can do to simulate what the sounds might be of a drum set, make a video. I'm going to tell you at the end of this lesson how you're going to be able to put it up uh, so you can send it to us. Um, and then uh, if you, we're going to choose the drummer that we think is put the most effort into practicing over the last two or three weeks to play this. Um, I wish we could pick all of you to win because we'd love for all of you to have drum sets. But uh, just kind of a little fun thing right now, once you get this down, you see you can do it though, you know, find a teacher, go online, obviously sign up at drumchannel.com. We have lessons from beginners all the way through pros that can assist you on, on your journey. The second rock beat, okay, this one's a little bit easier sounding, but it might be even a little bit more difficult to do. Let's start this one with just the foot and the left hand. It's one, two. It's just opposite. Foot, hand, foot, hand. Now, you hear drummers sometimes count off the songs. You'll hear them at the beginning of a song. Or the band leader will go, one, two, three, four. That's because they're counting the number of pulses in what's called a measure or a bar. They're setting a time pulse so everybody in the band comes in at the same time. And the key job of the drummer is to keep the pulse even. Right. That has to be a steady pulse that you keep without. And I have a great clip. Um, whether you're a beginning drummer or an advanced drummer, because time is always an issue for drummers when they start. How do I keep an even pulse and even time? What is time? You know, what is that even pulse? I've got three of the best musicians in the world who are going to give you a quick explanation of that in just a minute. Really cool stuff. So here we go. We're going foot, hand, foot, hand. One, two, three, four. Right foot, left hand, three, four. One, two. Then my right hand is going to do just what it did on the first exercise. It's going to play one and two and two notes for every pulse. But I'm only playing the foot on one and three. So one, two, three, four, and one and two and three and four and one and. Here's another way to get into it. Go back to the first one. One and two and together right, all together right. One and two and three and four. Now, just play the foot on every other one. Instead of on one, two, three, and four, play it on just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, we should have downloads for you on, uh, if you go to the Drum Channel site, uh, we'll have a download for you on this lesson of all three beats. So you can see it kind of spelled out. Adam, if you could write that up for us. Uh, and put it in the, into the download area and really break it down in one, two, three, and four. I'm only looking over here because Adam happens to be behind that camera. Um, Adam Coons, ladies and gentlemen, is here for Adam. Hey, uh, great drummer who's going to be doing a lesson here at six o'clock. Um, break it down into the right, left, right, left, and together, right, together, right, too, so they get that. The one we're going to be doing today, the surf beat, you've known the sound of it. It's um, bop, boom, boom, bop. Now you're playing the right foot on 
part of the notes you're playing with the right hand. One and two and three and four. And start again just with the right foot in the left hand. Boom, 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 bop. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. And add the right hand in. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three. And not as easy as it looks. One and two and three and four. And the whole idea of what I'm doing here, which seems like three different things at one time, and if you're thinking, I can't walk and chew gum, and I, you know, I'll never be a drummer, I'm not coordinated, it's not true. Uh, it's just a matter of getting certain things going independent of other things. So if I were to hand you this drumstick, reach out and pick it up. So if you do that, and you reach out your hand, you pick up the drumstick, uh, you've done a whole bunch of things that you didn't even think about, because you didn't think about raising your arm, putting it out, opening your hand, closing, you just did it automatically. And that's what drummers do when they're playing. You're not thinking of four things at the same time. You'd go, you know, buggy. You can't think about how is this playing with this and this playing this and this playing with this. That's what takes a little bit of the practice. You're going to just start out going with your foot. And once you get that going on one, two, three, and four, pretty soon it's just natural. And then you add the right hand in. You do two of them. Do that for 10, 15 minutes. And you can do it and start carrying on a conversation like I am. You don't have to think about together, right, together, right. And then just hear what's happening with your left foot or your left hand playing on two and four. So it's not as much coordination as it is independence. One thing goes independent of something else. I'll give you a little clue. When you see uh, Chad Smith play on a lot of the stuff that he has on Drum Channel, um, the Chad Smith Show, and a lot of things that he's doing, he plays really hard, he plays really solid, he plays really strong. And you'll see what he's doing with his right hand is an up and down motion. And that's the more sophisticated way you will learn how to play a rock beat. Um, the way I'm teaching you in these first three lessons is just to get you to do it. Once you can do it, I'm going to show you a much cooler way to play those exact same beats. And you're going to be doing it with what's called an outside release or an upstroke and a downstroke. So it makes it look, and if you look, you know, I'll really exaggerate it. If you look and see what I'm talking about in terms of coordination, I'm now going up and down with my right hand. I'm going up and down with my right foot. But I'm playing two with my hand and one with my foot. But it feels like one thing to me, up, down, up, down. And then I just come down on every other one. That's what you just did. And when you do that, you can get it going pretty fast. And if you go into uh, the drumchannel.com uh, website, and you go into lessons, and you hit on uh, areas where we're going to start teaching you the, the basic rock beats. When you get into lesson plans, the first one is there. They'll ask you the question, have you ever played drums before? Uh, do you want to get into it? If the answer is no, which is why you're probably here you know, listening to me, then uh, there's a series of lessons there that break down not only the simple way I'm showing you here, but a little bit more advanced way of doing it, which will actually even make it a little bit easier. All right, so here's the idea. You got lesson one, you got lesson two, you got lesson three. Um, how do you suggest they're going to actually be sending in to us the, uh, their, their videos? They can post them on YouTube, right, Adam? Then just info at drum and then just uh, send them to info, send the link to info at drumchannel.com. Any questions on that? Just video yourself getting this going as best you can. You have this week and you have next week. Next week will be the last lesson in this series, and then the following week after that, we'll pick the winner. So you'll see who actually is going to be winning the drum set. Um, actually, am I wrong? We'll be doing it next week. We'll pick the winner because I'm gone the following week. I want to get you the winner. So, so you have just this week. This is lesson three. You have just this week. If you can send us all three beats, then next week on the live show, you'll be, uh, we'll be announcing who's going who's to win the drum set. And people are shy about this. It's like, you know, I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. But uh, wouldn't this be a lot of fun, you know, your, your post-Christmas present if a drum set shows up at your house? Because uh, you can already play it if you can do this. Believe me, you're, you're pretty much there. Uh, once you get your drum set and you can get a pair of sticks, first thing you're going to want to do is get a practice pad. And then you have to think about how you hold the sticks. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, examples on drumchannel.com and a lot of different uh, 
personal ways people hold the sticks. It's not that there's a right and a wrong, but we all have you know, the same amount of fingers, we all have elbows, we all have wrists, and there's a certain way they can work in conjunction with each other in order to make it as easy as possible for you in order to play. Basically, uh, you grab the stick as, and, and again, I'm not concerned about speed or anything right now. I just want you to get something in your hands so you can get the feel of playing these basic rhythms. You would grab the stick, as we have said, between the thumb and first finger. The other fingers wrap around the hand. And then you're going to relax. Very hard to do because you're going to think you have to hit something. But you're going to relax as much as you can and let the stick drop. And as soon as it hits, follow the bounce back up. And here's a real cheating way. This is a Joe Morello trick, very famous uh, educator, jazz drummer. Take Five was a song that he made really famous. Hold the stick totally screwy just for these, this one example by putting it between your first two fingers like that. And then when you make the stroke, the stick will automatically bounce back because you're not holding on to it at any one point. It's just going to bounce back in your fingers. And when you do that, the trick is, you can see how fast it like shoots back off the practice pad. And every great drummer we've had in here, they all absolutely say over and over and again how important it is to let the stick rebound off of the head. The sense is, you know, if you're picking up a couple of pieces of wood and you want to play really fast, your first, your, you know, your adult brain kicks in and you think what I want to do is just the faster I go, the harder I got to play. And it's just the opposite, really. The faster you go, the more you have to relax and work with the bounce of the stick. Uh, perfect wrist turns, perfect example how to hit something. If you have a little brother or sister, three or four years old, give them a pair of sticks. And the first thing they're going to do is they're going to hold them basically in the correct way, and they're going to have basically correct wrist turns. They're not going to be pounding it like this. They're going to be very relaxed. They're going to be using their whole arm, their elbow. Watch them when they do it. You know, the last thing you would think of doing is hitting something like this if you're totally relaxed and all you're doing is letting your body work in its most natural way. So that's all I want you to do at this point is just get basic grasp of the sticks. They'll be both be hold in what we should call the traditional position now because traditionally more people hold their sticks like this than this way, which is literally called the traditional position. Um, this is matched grip because they're both held as the same as they are in the right hand. So we'll just look at the right hand. Your left hand would be just the same. Hold the stick between the thumb and the first finger. Let those other fingers loosely cradle around the stick and then just relax and let the stick drop and follow the bounce back up. Here's the key. And you see this in uh, the technique lessons on Drum Channel. Um, I went at great lengths with Ralph Humphrey, who gives you this lesson, uh, a little more advanced version of it, where he bounces a basketball, and we look at the basketball bouncing, and we look at the stick hitting the pad and rebounding off of the drum. So I'm going to do two things. Adam, if you can come in real close on the point of impact here, where I'm actually striking the drum, I'm going to play in a way in which I'm not letting the stick bounce off the head. Now I'm going to let it bounce. It doesn't bounce. Feels very close the same. It's going to feel very much the same to you. But watch at the point of impact right here. If you see an image of the bead of the stick, if you actually see that there for a second, see it as opposed to, then it stopped and it's coming back up because I'm bringing it back up. So get in front of a mirror. Sit and look at yourself, because you can teach yourself a lot of these things as you're going through it. Look at, look at the beat of the stick at the point of impact and be sure you don't see it. If you do, then you're probably way too tense and too tight, and you're going to be able to learn and get twice as much speed if you stay relaxed. So that's one little tip. You've got to follow the bounce of the stick. Hold the stick between the thumb and the first finger. And now, get going on those pots and pans and whatever you can pull out there uh, from, the, from the kitchen without getting in too much trouble, and try that basic rock beat. Time. What is time? Uh, bring your older brothers, sisters in, um, if they play drums or play any instrument a little bit, because they should learn a lot from this little one minute clip about three of the greatest musicians in the world. Um, we have uh, Luis Conte, who uh, you may have seen recently. I think it was on the Grammy uh, Awards. Was it? The Grammys that Luis was on? There was some award show that he was on playing. Oh, I know. It was the, uh, the Salute to the Beatles. Um, or that was Lenny Castro. Luis, I think, was on the Grammys. Uh, great percussionist. 
um, J.R. Robinson, one of the most recorded drummers of all times in, in terms of records sold uh, during the period of time uh, he was you know, living his life as he still continues to do in the studio. I think we said over 100 million records he was on, is that right, on the cover of his DVD? Uh, he has a great DVD that we have out. Um, and Abe Laboreal Sr., uh, who gives a real insight into what is time. It's what a drummer's life's all about. Take a look at this quick clip and I'll be right back. What is, what is your concept about time? And I, and I don't necessarily want to suggest that it has to do with any other, like all kinds of music. I mean, tell me, what is your concept about, you know, music and time? Well, this is a cliche that I use all the time, you know. Um, I heard a pastor say that the highest form of love that exists is listening. Mm. Because whenever people feel that someone is listening to them, they feel loved. Mm. And we as musicians, we are professional listeners. So that when someone starts playing their personal sense of time, we are trained instinctively to some way somehow to know how to relate to what's going on and make it stronger mm. and better than it is. What is your concept about time? I mean, well, it's really hard to follow. No, that was exactly. like that, the greatest that's like thing. That's like so perfect, you it know. Is. But I mean, if you, for me, I mean, and, and it's listening to everybody and, and making an adjustment. If you have a wheel, like if you take the inner tube of a bicycle, right. And if, the, if it doesn't have a flat, or have, sometimes they bubble up a little bit. Or if it's just perfectly like that, it, it would always, there'll be no bump in the road, you know what I mean? It would always roll. So if, 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 if we have this thing here that's time, and there's one little thing sticking out there, then time is gone. Right. So I just see it, time as someone being really smooth. It doesn't, as long as it's smooth. Right, it doesn't, ha it doesn't matter if it drags or rushes as yeah. long as it's smooth, or if it flows. Yeah, exactly. Right. The, the, the thing the can flow. be elliptical, or it, could have yeah. be, it doesn't have to be completely, exactly, perfectly round. That's Uncle Don's words of wisdom for today. Uh, and I don't think it could be any better than that. We have two great drummers in the room here. Adam, have you heard that before? Have you heard him say that? So time is uh, something that you know, can be elusive for drummers, but don't let it scare you. Of course, you can practice with a metronome, and there's a whole bunch of conversations we'll have about how you can improve your time and improve your playing, uh, keep your fills even, not speed up. Uh, slowing down is usually not that much of an issue for drummers as it is speeding up because you're excited in the moment. Um, but, you know, those guys uh, live in the studio. I mean, they know how to play perfect time, perfect metronomic time, but they also really understand the experience of letting that time flow. I love what Luis said, you know, it's kind of like an egg going down a hill. If it gets a little bit ahead or a little bit behind, but the whole band is together, that's what makes it music, and that's what happens when you're listening. And one of the jobs that young drummers uh, have that they don't do a very good job at is listening. Usually you get so involved in practicing what you're doing that it's hard to get to the point to where you're, you're hearing what other people are, are doing. A um, Couple of questions and then we're gonna be running out of time, another version of time. Um, what's the best way to uh, learn how to play? Uh, can you suggest videos or books? Boy, that's a good question. Um, best way to learn how to play is to get these basic rock beats down and get a drum set, <laughs> or maybe you already do have a drum set and you're trying to figure out how to get better at it. Um, I know a lot of you on Drum Channel um, have played in earlier years when you were in high school or in grade school and now you got the kids and the family and it's kind of fun to get back into it with everybody. Um, I would say the, you know, the best thing, of course, is to find a private instructor. Uh, there's a great of on, a lot of great online uh, learning resources, um, drum channel, you know, is a way that you're going to be able to improve wherever you're at, you know, our kind of saying is we'll take you from wherever you're at to wherever you want to go, including being a professional drummer, because we have the best drummers in the world on here telling you how they do what they do. But we can also get you started at a, at a very basic level. So wherever you're studying, you know, I think we're a real asset to helping you progress. And there are a lot of, you know, great books out there. Um, but I think, you know, starting with a teacher and just getting into it and starting with lesson one, you know, getting with some friends and playing, it's all about having fun. You know, it's got to be a fun experience. Um, what, uh, 
<laughs> How expensive is a drum set? Larry wants to know that in New Jersey. So um, a drum set can, you know, it's not the least expensive instrument to get started on, obviously. Uh, it's not like you can go in and buy a $35 or $40 guitar. Drum sets uh, range, from the best of my knowledge, in the $300. I think if you're getting a serious one that you'll be able to, you know, keep for the first year or so of your life, you're probably in the three or four hundred dollar price range. Um, and then they can get up to, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars depending on finishes and how many drums you want. A four-piece drum set is a great way to start. Many beginner drum sets are five-piece drum sets, which there's nothing wrong with that either. But um, the, the fundamentals of what you're going to be doing and moving around the drums, you'd be doing on basically by four-piece drum set, we're talking about the snare drum, the tom-tom, the floor tom, the bass drum. Um, we have a DVD called Your Six First Basic Drum Lessons, which is in the drumchannel.com store, our new download store. And that not only breaks down all of the parts of the drum set, shows you how or helps you, you know, look at how you can set it up, but um, also gives you some lessons from some of the best drummers in the world that are really basic too. So um, I hope that answered that question you know, a little bit. Oh, get Adam back in here. Um, I might have to get back to this one. How many rudiments are there? Whoa. Uh, ask him in there and see if he knows. I know when I started, this is not good news. Uncle Don started a long time ago, um, and there were 13 basic rudiments. And I think those 13 basic rudiments are still a mainstay of all the rudiments. Then there was 26 rudiments. I think that was the next section. Adam is saying there's 42 rudiments now. Um, interesting uh, question, though, because I know I'd had conversations with the great Louis Belson from time to time, and, uh, and even though there's great sticking patterns, which is what the rudiments are, uh, there's either singles, doubles, flams, uh, or, and I think, you know, crush rolls or closed rolls is what Murray Spivak looked at as like the four basic ways that you would be able to produce singles or double strokes, and all rudiments are made out of those. So one line of thinking is there's kind of four basic, basic rudiments. Uh, the other line of thinking is that, you know, you can take those basic rudiments and put them into any number of sticking patterns. What, is, what are rudiments, by the way? Any answers? What, what, is, it, what is a rudiment? Stephen, why, why do we have rudiments? Pardon? Why do we have rudiments? See, a cameraman, see, I, come on, you guys got to listen to what's going on here. Um, the rudiments are simply scales that drummers use to practice. If you have played on keyboards or pianos or anything, you'll know how to run scales up and down. And, and if you practice scales, you get more proficient on your instrument. And rudiments will allow drummers to play all different combinations that they can eventually call and recall naturally to play whatever they hear, because that's kind of what it's all about. So if you don't know what a rudiment is, that's what it is. Basic rudiments are single stroke, double stroke rolls, paradiddles, um, and again, the 13 basic rudiments would then go through all the rolls uh, with roughs, and, uh, and then they get much more complicated as they go through. As, as marching drumming and basically technique has improved, there have been a lot more rudiments that you could practice. Um, so the answer is 42. Um, the, the next question is that we're out of time for questions because we're kind of running out of time for the show because I'm going to run into Adams. And the problem I have is the person who tells me when we're out of time is Adam. So he's very careful to be sure that uh, I don't run into what he needs for his show. And he needs about a half hour to switch over because Adam is not only going to do the next show for you, great drummer, graduated from Cal State Northridge, uh, honors, right? He was kuma summa paradiddle. And, um, and at the same time, and in the A band, studied with Greg Bissonette, uh, and interned out here with us when he was very, very young. And he's the most amazing transcriber I've ever seen in my life. If you've seen the Chad Smith stuff on the website, where Chad air drums this drum, cool drum solo, uh, which he wasn't doing hearing any music at all. He was just making something up. I wanted to take the drums away from him because you know, one of the most important things when you play these basic rock beats is your basic body motion so that you, you know, get into the feeling of what the time is. But uh, Adam actually transcribed all of those motions and put it, put it together. So uh, he had his lesson coming up here in just about uh, 30 minutes. The first rock beat we did, Together, right, all together, right. Together, right, all together, right. Get out the frying pan, bigger pot, foot on the floor.
Lesson number two, right here on YouTube and on Drum Channel, bass drum on one and three or every other one. One, hand, foot, hand. Right hand does the same thing on all of them. Don't go any faster than this. I'm trying to get you so you can win the drum set. And then the new one we did over there is the right foot going with the right hand. Foot, hand, foot, foot, hand, foot, hand, foot, foot, hand, foot, hand, foot, foot, hand, and I would sing a surf song, but we would have to pay a license fee for it at that point. So uh, check out the first two lessons in this one. Video yourself, and it doesn't have to be fancy. We don't care what it is, just your iPhone, whatever, whatever you're doing. Have mom and dad video you. Um, Dad will probably do it because he wants a drum set you know, instead of you. But play it, sit there, play it, put it up on YouTube, send us the link. We'll judge it, and next week we'll let you know who won the kit and do some more fun stuff, and I'll have another... Uh, wise wisdom of word for the day for you. Uh, right now, let's take a look at what uh, drumchannel.com is all about and hear from some of the greatest drummers in the world who I've been talking to you about today. And I'll see you next week with the winner. Thank you. Hi, Neil Peart here, and welcome to the Drum Channel. Drum Channel? Yeah. Did you say that? Drumchannel.com. We're just having a great time here at the Drum Channel, uh, jamming and making music. Hi, I'm Greg Bissonette, and welcome to Drum Channel. I'm going to show you how the best drummers in the world can help you to become a better all-around drummer. Our exclusive live and on-demand weekly lessons are created for players and instructors covering all skill levels. You can quickly and easily navigate over 500 lessons that will help you get faster, improve your groove, and add tons of beats and fills to your drumming vocabulary. Drum Channel Live and on-demand shows are another great way to learn. We have drummers interviewing other drummers, band concerts, jams, and you can get your questions answered live. Speaking of questions, DC Feedback is where you can submit a video or question anytime, and you will get an answer from a drummer on our faculty. Check out our library of lessons and shows and meet your incredible Drum Channel faculty. So I think this is one of the most unbelievable things about Drum Channel. When you join our passionate, exclusive drumming community, you get unlimited and instant access to our lessons and live shows with the best drummers in the world, all for just a few pennies a day. You can enter your email address to get one free weekly lesson, or just sign up now, and in just a few minutes, you'll be learning from me and my great friends Terry Bozio, Chad Smith, Neil Peart, Peter Erskine, and many great drummers here at Drum Channel. See you around the campus.